Hello, hello. I am Alexander Bestrov, and today I am going to share our experience. It's about how we managed to keep the practical labs running for our MSc students at Newcastle University during the pandemic times. I am a degree program director of an MSc course on embedded systems and Internet of Things. It's the School of Engineering at Newcastle University, UK. The major concern regarding the pandemic was that a significant part of our course, it's the design experience and development of design skills by the students. And these days they are normally unable, or at least discouraged, to attend the um, laboratories. So I decided to put in place the remote access to the lab equipment. And the remote access includes both the control of the tools and in the lab and also the video feed from the lab. And you will see quite soon how it is done. First things first, this is the architecture of the system which I designed. It includes very common components and it's quite cheap. So what do we see here? These are the main objects which need to be controlled and these are the development boards which are used by the students during their coursework. They sit in the lab and they receive the power through USB power supply and uh, they also have RS-232 serial interface connections to a PC which runs tool chains normally but this PC is not accessible by the students any longer because the PC is in the lab and the students are at home so what I did, I used a Raspberry Pi and it has several uh, USB um, interfaces so I connected those RS-232 serial interfaces to the USB ports by using USB to RS-232 adapt adapters which is simple after that, after that, once uh, the adapters are connected inside this master Pi device um, a detection happens and uh, those USB adapters are recognized as slash dev slash TTY USB 0, 1, 2, 3 ports. Right, so this 0 is just for a particular example of the board number 0 being connected. The Raspberry Pi device also includes a camera. It's a high-quality, high high-definition camera which can be mounted pretty much anywhere. Uh, we, we, we sit it above our equipment in the lab so the students could observe what's going on. Um, in some particular exercises there is much of things to observe. In this particular um, coursework which I'm describing there are LEDs on those ARM FPGA boards uh, which will be blinking and the students need to get some visual feedback of the results of their work or results of their programming. So the camera is not just desirable but I would say it is an essential component of the student experience. Then this um, Raspberry Pi device and we have several of those, six of these, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're all connected to a switch, which is a network, a network device, which, which provides um, uh, connectivity at the link level. LANs are constructed out of such. And it's also connected to a firewall device, which is our gateway. And this, this, this is a, an old Intel PC, which has two interface cards this one, this one. Uh, one of these cards is the private network for any equipment here 
in the lab and the other interface card is tuned towards W, which is World Wide Web. It is accessible from anywhere in the world. And this is how those um, Raspberry Pis talk to the students and me as well. We also use this box which is um, a cloud-based computer with Linux operating system. Why we need it? Because um, it is highly desirable to have a single setup for the entire class. The students will be working with this compute. They log in into this remotely by using secure shell. Now, on this side of the graph uh, of the diagram, I have uh, the home computer of a student and specifies that this computer has to be equipped with a secure shell so they could, could, could log in into this cloud computer and also it has X11 server running so what is X11? X11 is the standard for Linux graphics and basically any remote program on the Linux can display its window or any necessary graphics could be video and so on uh, locally so, um, they have to install this. Right, so it's a reasonably simple system. So in this uh, Raspberry Pi, those ports, the devices, they have to be somehow mapped into the internet-based objects. So that's what it is done. For example, for the device number six, that's Master Pi number six. Right? The board number zero in this device, it is represented inside, inside the Raspberry Pi as this kind of file. So its name is slash dev slash tcy usb zero. And uh, we are running a special program which performs mapping of that into the local host port 10060. Well, what we have here, it's on the left, it is an object which is a device, right? And uh, in Linux terms, it is a terminal of some sort. And on the right, we have a port on an internet interface. This is the internal local host port, but bear with me, it can be apparently forwarded to a different computer. Actually, this is a function of secure shell to forward ports. So the secure shell run in this Pi performs mapping of the local host, the same port number, into the cloud computer with the same port number. Right? So the port, the internet port, which is the mapping of those um, device, devices, is, is, is going from this uh, Raspberry Pi device through the internet into the World Wide Web reaching the cloud computer and becomes mapped into the corresponding port there. Mm -hmm. In this uh, cloud computer what we have there is um, a program going, running there whose business is to map those images of, of the internet representation of a device right. and map those images into the local to the cloud machine fake device. Why is it fake? Because the device is not here but the device appears almost magically as a result of the operation of mapping. So um, this device in the remote machine acts for all practical purposes, similar to the USB zero port in a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. So in this uh, cloud machine, as a result, we can run the tool chain if you want. We can run a debugger, we can compile uh, programs and um, observe the results. What we cannot do with the cloud machine, we cannot um, observe, we cannot see actually what's going on physically in the lab, so the camera is not streamed through the cloud machine. Now, the camera. 
The camera is connected to, uh, to the Raspberry Pi. It's a standard uh, Raspberry Pi camera. It's supported with the software for the Pi. And uh, it is possible to map the camera into the local host port H in the Raspberry Pi while running on this port a very simple, very small web server. So basically, if you are sitting here at the console of Raspberry Pi, you could have opened a web browser, pointed at, at this URL link, and then the video will be shown. Right? But, but you are not sitting here, right? Furthermore, there is a problem that that's a gateway machine, so you cannot really from Raspberry, uh, you cannot really uh, connect to this Raspberry Pi from a home machine, right? Why is it possible? Because um, the whole LAN here behind the firewall is uh, so-called private addresses. So it, can, it cannot be accessed from the outside. So it can only go from inside to the uh, large world. So what this uh, uh, Raspberry Pi does, it performs this mapping of this uh, port H, which is the web server host, right? Port H into the gateway machine, into a port number, in this case, 12600. So this appears in this gateway machine. Mm -hmm. Why is it important? Because this um, machine is exposed to the World Wide Web and is also accessible by the students. We have accounts in it. And these accounts are managed by the infrastructure in a very secure way. So that's good. Now, the students. The students are sitting at their console in their home computer, at their home computer, and what they do, what they do here, they perform the mapping um, of the gateway port 12600 from this machine into this machine. And what is this port? It's the port which is here, and is an image of this port, and this is actually the web server. So this is how the can access the camera. So this port appears in their local home machine at this URL. So they can type this URL in the web browser and see the video feed from the lab. Hmm. So the structure is such that the students can view whatever happens in the lab in our case, it's a very simple scenario, but potentially it could be some mechanical systems working there as well, or mechatronic systems working there as well. And they can also use secure shell connections to the cloud computer, to this cloud computer, right? And they can run the tool chain of a secure shell in the cloud computer while displaying locally the graphical user interface of those tools. So, we are ready for the actual demo now. Should we begin? In this browser window, I have the remote control over the cloud machine. It is currently switched off and I need to power it up like this and it's starting. Please ignore these comments because uh, they are inherited from my experimentation with this machine. In reality it is a production machine um, on which the coursework was run. It takes time to boot the machine so uh, meanwhile let's have a look at the layout of the screen. This is my OBS studio tool which I'm using to record this presentation. The nesting nice is because the preview is showing the preview and that window is showing the preview, preview, preview. So it's nice and funny. Here in this window we have my architecture, the architecture of the system. So at the moment we are starting this cloud computer. It takes time to start. You see, it's not running just yet. 
Now I have prepared several terminals here. So here I'm typing very fast, actually I'm copying the text. I'm putting here a command secure shell. It's a tool for secure communication between the hosts. It will connect to my login name at the gateway computer. And the gateway computer is unix at newcastle AC UK and will perform port forwarding. Right. It will take the remote port, it's the option L, right, and map it into the local port. Um, and there are many of such statements here why I need so many because I have multiple Raspberry Pis working and uh, although my um, demonstration is focused on a particular uh, workstation which is number six here I'm mapping plenty of those you see the count goes from one to four five six right? so all of them are mapped All these pies are running, so they are all represented somehow in this computer as their ports. So let me run this command, and um, now all these ports are connected to my local computer. Oh, the cloud machine has started eventually, so now it is running. Now it's time to reboot. The Raspberry Pis. I am not dealing with all of them, I am just taking a selected one, the Pi number 6. You see Pi number 6, that's the port of that. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the port for this is this one, number 6. Right? What I do with this, I connect to what the secure shell, to the port number it's the image of the uh, secure shell uh, port in, uh, in the uh, Raspberry Pi in my local host computer and the user will be Pi user, it's a default user and in, inside that little machine I will execute the commands sudo and reboot right? sudo, uh, so, sudo uh, means um, do um, an action as a super user certain actions are privileged, reboot one of those, it's the administrator's business to do so. Let me do that. And now the connection to that Pi is dropped. Why? Because it's being rebooted. Well, it takes, takes probably a minute or something like this to reboot it. It will come back online very, very soon. The next, the next for me will be to go into this window. And in this window, I pretend that I type very fast, but I actually copy this. This is my login into the cloud server. Where is my cloud server? Here it is, right? So for my home machine, I'm logging in into this by using secure shell command. The students can do the same unless they're using Windows or Apple Mac system, in which case the command will look slightly differently, so there will be a graphical user interface attached to this. So the command looks long, but it doesn't really, but it's, it's not the reality actually, because the long part is the very long name of the uh, cloud server. Otherwise, I'm connecting to this while providing the X11 connectivity, connecting to a specified port, the port is given to me by the cloud machine administrators and this is the username and the name of the machine. Now I'm connected there, connected there, and while I was uh, spending time uh, connecting to this machine, I hope that the Pi in question has rebooted already, right? How to check it? I will log in into this without rebooting it. Right? Is it running? Yes, it's running. <laughs> now, if you remember this earlier long command, apart from other things, it performed this. Right? It was uh, 
mapping mapping the port 12600 from uh, the gateway machine into the local host right it was here it was uh, mapping from the gateway to the local host the same port what is this port this port is this is the port right from and it is the image of the web server on the Pi which serves the video stream right. so I can try now to obtain this video stream so in this window I am trying to view localhost the same port showing nothing because uh, the page was not refreshed since I rebooted the machine now refreshing it and now I can see the laboratory setup. Now I see those <coughs> boards running. There are four boards on each camera. Now, once I have logged in into my cloud machine, I am pretending to be a student. Mm -hmm. In this machine I go into my examples directory. So these are the examples provided to the students and in this directory there are all sorts of files and uh, the one which I'm going to execute is this one it's ex.c example.c it flashes some LEDs in order to uh, um, internally illustrate concepts of programming in particular the use of hardware and software interrupts together with a timer it's all applied to a microcontroller which sits in each of those boards and the microcontroller is ARM based very popular microcontroller so here I can compile the programs make but before compiling I, I should clean up the directory make clean okay so the results of compilation have been removed now compilation make the compiler is running and now it's happy has produced the result uh, the result of comp uh, calculations is uh, the file ex this one it is executable but it is cross compiled for the board it cannot be executed in this machine so I need to load it on the board for this I am calling a debugger the business of the debugger is to uh, load the software onto the development board execute it there observe the effects do memory dumps it also controls the FPGA part of the board uh, both uh, the board and the debugger were designed by the researchers and developers at Manchester University my contribution to this work was um, creation of this tool chain based on open source GCC compiler now let me start the debugger on the board number 601 for example I can use any of those and now it started this is the debugger its name is KMD Manchester University here I select the file to download file EX this is here I need to stop and reset the board and now I load the file it says 100% loaded and now I can run it well once this button is pressed something will start happening here and also please keep an eye on the boards the LEDs will start flashing yes so this is the board which is 
6.01 it is now working and we can observe the results of the real-time operation of our program visually and at the same time inside the debugger we can see that the program is running so the steps are counting there are changes to the registers general purpose registers in the processor it's also possible to set up all sorts of uh, breakpoints and do the usual debugging business for this program right so this uh, concludes my demo I must say it was a great re relief to me as a degree program director and module leader uh, for this module to have everything working we have completed already the practical part of the coursework and uh, looks like the students managed to complete it um, just fine the early feedback from them is reasonably positive I'm saying reasonably because uh, of course nothing can replace the physical presence of a student in the lab but this is probably the best of what we can do under the conditions furthermore furthermore a significant difference between this mode of teaching and uh, physical attendance of labs is that the equipment is available 24 hours a day to the students so so it gives more flexibility in terms of time and more flexibility in the sense um, when a student is doing a practical work or when they're doing a write-up on a different module perhaps so uh, it is in general it's a positive experience right so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you the next time